Hey everyone, my name is Azizazie and today I want to talk to you about this awesome project that I created last year, which I interviewed 20 million women that they share their stories to the world that they get. And my vision was to inspire and empower other immigrant women that they want to come here. They want to immigrate to Canada or any other countries, but they have that fear that what's going to happen next or what's, what's happening, or they are going through a hard time because we all go through it. And I just want to inspire them by watching these videos that if they did it, they can do it too. And they are not alone. I hope you enjoy them. And if you like my, my channel, please subscribe and I have more projects coming on soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Hello, hello. I'm here with Mimi Kabongo and today is May 26th, 2020 and we're still in quarantine. How are you doing, Mimi? I'm good. How are you, Azira? I'm good. So how's uh, quarantine with you? Um, with adapting. Thank you for getting used to it. <laughs> okay, so um, okay, I'm just gonna start with a question about uh, empowering women through photography and like immigrant women. And if you just want to tell us about yourself, how old are you, and uh, what do you do right now, and when did you come to Canada? Okay, um, you know, my name is Mimi Kabongo. I am Congolese. I uh, came to Canada when I was nine years old. 1997. Um, so I've been here forever, right? You know, Canada is my home. Um, I feel more a stranger when I go visit my home, you know, my hometown. But other than that, um, you know, what I do now, okay, I'm a community engagement worker. Um, I work with the nonprofit industry, kind of more of analytics, uh, managing and reviewing data. And information from the nonprofit sectors, more kind of you know helping the nonprofit more valuing the work and weighing the work and um, evidence of what they do and how it impact the community. Um, my background, I am a human resource management profession, so this is kind of not in my field, but it's something I love doing. I love social work. Yeah. That's great. I, I know you and I know that this, your story, but I want you to tell us more. I know you came when you were nine years old, but um, how was it the first, uh, maybe first year or two when you came to Canada? Um, you know, coming from a home that we speak French and um, Lingala, which is a mother, mother tongue, um, and it, being thrown in this society where it's English and um, go to school, but you know, I went to English school, I didn't go to French school, so they put me in English school where I have no idea what they're saying, <laughs> and I have to, you know, try to understand, not only understand what people, the teachers are learning and learning the textbook, being able to read, it was difficult to kind of, and culture shock, right? Things are done differently here um, in terms of respect, that's one thing I know is different here. I noticed that as a young, everybody calls each other and they're even older people in the first names. That was something that kind of threw me off where we come from is more kind of like, um, in French we'll say miss, um, missus or Mr. Sir and stuff like that. So you're calling Azira and you're like, hey, you're calling, yeah, Azira, come in. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, things like that. We're like, oh, Miss Azira and stuff like that. But yeah, it was, it was hard because, you know, Everything is different. It was the language is not the same, and I had to not only understand it, but trying to work with it and myself before I even say it. Um, yeah. So that was the the difficult part. The good part was you got to learn different languages, right? You get to see a different culture, which was fun, right? So yeah. Okay, I'm just imagining you as a nine year old. And, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so but like um, I guess you did you have anybody here or like when you came here yes I came to live with my father and his wife yes oh, I see. yeah so, so leaving, you know leaving my mother and my sisters back home um, 
So that, that emotional part was hard, right? Coming here and leaving your mother, I didn't really know my dad. So this was the first time seeing him, getting to know him. Um, and then um, living in this life, you can't see your mom every day. I'm the last child, so I was the baby. <laughs> and coming in this home where I'm no longer the baby, and um, and you miss your mom, you know. And when you're young, in that age, you know your dad's here, but you miss your mom. You miss you're familiar with other people. Yeah, that was hard. That was really hard. Yeah. You know, like I can't, I can't like ask you how did you come overcome your struggles or fears, but like I guess it, as nine year old, I guess you just I don't know. You share your experience, like. What was it like? Like, well, was you when you come here first? You know, as the immigration process. You know, I had to learn that in the early on because you need a education permit to go to school. So I would go to school for a couple months, and then when it expired, I have to be off school, and then wait till they apply again and the process, and then go back to school. So that back and forth really kind of messed me off because you'll be in school like normal people, like normal students, and you can't go to school. And, the, you know, the principal like, oh, you know, you can't come September because your education permits expire. So you kind of like, and you see back to school, your friends are going back to school and stuff like that, and you're waiting for the permit. Um, that feeling, you know, as a child, it was really hard. And I hope the system is much better now <laughs> than it was back then. But back then you have to wait. Like you have to wait until your paper comes in. You can't travel. Um, one instant that I need, you know, incident I remember it was summertime where, you know, our church at the time, young people, teenagers, we did the youth trip to uh, six, six flags. I couldn't go. Because I didn't have my papers yet, I didn't have my passport and stuff like that. So that feeling, I, I remember till today, <laughs> everybody's, oh, so I'm going, I'm going. You're kind of like, yeah, I cannot go. <laughs> you know, because I need my travel papers and I need stuff to get the travel papers. So that difficulty as a child, like I don't, you don't really wish that to a child. But you see other people's going and people go on the trips and you cannot go and you just feel like, okay. I need my, I need my papers. And you, you, you know, you, as a child, you praying for it, Lord, please make sure I get my permanent residence so I can go travel like everybody else. So I remember things like that, that stick with me till today. Yeah. So, so I was so excited when I got my papers. I'm like, yes, now I can travel. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you were much older at that time. To yes. Travel yeah. by yourself. Bro. There we go, right? So by, as, a, as, as a nine-year-old, you know, it took me a while to get my paper. I didn't get it until I was a teenager. But you, you can't do everything. You, you know, it stick to you. You can't go to school like everybody. You on and off, homeschooling, back in school. So, yeah. That I remember. That was painful. <laughs> so um, I know I have the question I have because mostly like it's about like how did you overcome your struggles or fears and stuff. But like I don't know. I I don't think I can ask you those when you were nine year old. I, I don't know. know like, I or like what price did you pay to be here right now? Hmm. Well, I didn't have a choice, right? <laughs> At the matter. Um, I guess, you know, it was time my my dad sent for me, so it was his turn, so I had to come over, so I, I had no say. Um, but I always, you know, at the time, if somebody had asked me, I would have said no. But now being here and um, seeing how privileged in the opportunity that's given to me as an adult, you know, like... I hated my dad for bringing me here, but I kind of thank him <laughs> because of I'm able to education system and more, and even the environment in terms of women go to school and pursue your dreams and so forth. I feel like I have more opportunity here. And if I have stayed, you know, when you go back and visit, you kind of see your your friends, your cousins who live back home and then you see the life and you see yours, they're kind of like, Thank God I'm here. <laughs> right? Yeah, so, thank God you're here. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to yeah. you know? Right? 
So it's kind of like, you know, you, you have that, the fear is more kind of like, in, even when you're young, it's fitting in, right? So when, when we were young, when I was young, it was more kind of like, you want to put on the identity to be part of, right? So you, you want to fit in, so you look, you want to look a certain way, you want to dress a certain way. So in high school, you know that you're, you know, you're coming from Africa, you, your style is different, but you do things because you want to fit in. Um, yeah, so, and you kind of lose your identity a little bit, you're African, but I, I lost it for me. I was kind of like trying to fit in into this, more for me, because the school, the students around me was more Jamaicans, right? Jamaican Canadian. So you're trying to fit in, you're trying to act like you're Jamaican. I'm not Jamaican, but, <laughs> but you're trying, trying to fit in and I'm learning a language and I'm trying to learn Patois and stuff like that because you want to put in that face. So like, oh, I'm, I'm Canadian or I belong. Um, so it, it's a struggle after a while until you self-awareness as an adult. You're kind of like, like, you keep your identity and still kind of be Canadian. You can still be you. Right, you don't have to change anything or where you're from just to fit in. If anything, it can be part of your journey, and then you you're different because where you're from, right? Your quality is a little bit different. Your experience is different, which makes your journey even better, right? You have more to say. I always say you culturally differently. I have, I have stories to tell. You know, my counterparts or Canadians who were born here, but yeah, so. It, I yeah, guess. we all we all have stories to tell. Like yeah. wherever we come from, doesn't matter what age, and uh, mm -hmm. we all have. You don't have to lose yourself. You don't have to lose that part, right? Your background or where you're from, and just to be part, just to be Canadian. You can be African Canadian. You don't have to be Canadian alone. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like what? Again, I'm going back to nine-year-old, but like, yeah. I guess now that you're an adult, like, what mm -hmm. sort of discipline do you have for the women, immigrant women that they want to come here or if they've been here, they just, you know, they're kind of, they need inspiration, they need... Yeah, yeah. I can do both. Um, as a younger person, when you, my advice to them or the lesson for them when they come in is being yourself, you know, um, experience or your background and educate others where you came from um and talk about the positive of it you know sometimes we like to say okay you know i my country we talk about the bad things so we can like oh you know i came here for this but there's a good things to where you come from that you can share with others so they can understand where you're from um and enjoy the journey like there's a lot more you can learn and be part of without losing yourself. And um, the lesson for older women, older, you know, my age, it's going to be hard because everything's different compared to where you came from. But there's a lot of similarity if you really take your time and see that you can learn from other people. And now that it's more internationally, you know, diversified here, you, you can find anybody from your culture. And don't be afraid to go outside your box. Um, for our side, mostly when I see Congolese from Africa, they kind of stick to themselves. <laughs> and they're just like, oh, you're from Congo. Okay, I'm sticking with you. And they don't try to make friends outside, you know, um, the, the culture, which it's amazing. I enjoy, I have friends from Iran, I have Indian friends, I have white, you know, it's, it's nice, you know, Mexican and it, it's all those things, Italian friends, and you learn different cultures and it's more exciting. You learn different new things and new experience. And you get to learn about the person and the, the country where they come from and so forth. So don't be outside, to, don't be afraid to make friends from other people, you know, from other people from other nations and stuff. Yeah, stepping out of your comfort zone and like yes. being in a community. I know it's hard, yeah. but yeah. It's hard, but 
<laughs> we did it. We did, we did, we did it, right? We did, we did it. You can do it too. So. Different food, and you know, I do Iranian dance and everything. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, speaking of food, like you know, we just, I'm still waiting that for the food, food. So you brought it up again, like that food, food. Anybody, yeah, know, right? anybody listen to this? Anybody? You know what? I'm gonna this? make a YouTube video about how to make it, so you can. I'm, I'm gonna oh, now you're gonna show me the video. <laughs> now you can taste it. <laughs> I'm gonna do a TikTok. You can follow up. But yeah, you know, there's this. There's a lot more there. You know, you don't just don't just stick. It's nothing's wrong with sticking with your own. There's nothing wrong with it. But as you go, experience as you go to school, and trying to meet other people. You know, so why not? So true, so true, and yeah, the networking and connections and all you this. Never know who you're talking to. I always said. <laughs> What's that? I said you never know who you're talking to. Maybe your next oh, boss yeah. or your employee, right? True, so, true. Or business 100%. partner. Yep. So, yeah, that's it. I guess we did it. We did. Yeah. Yay. Thank you so much, me. <laughs> This was great. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for being with me. Yeah. Thank you for accepting it. Yeah. And you know, I I know you for many years, but this way we never. Oh my God! How many years now? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, like what? We're going for it. Almost eight years. 2012. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay, let me uh, finish the interview and then we can. <laughs> Right. Thank you and love you and have a good day. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs>